2022. We gather online this morning as the communities of Mount Calvary Evangelical Lutheran Church in Upper Northfield, Nova Scotia, and St. John's Evangelical Lutheran Church here in Mahone Bay, Nova Scotia. As we begin, we invite you to breathe in the grace of God, to be still and know the presence of the Holy Spirit. Together we pause to prepare our heads and hearts for worship. Jesus calls us from the market stalls, not to leave our livelihood behind. Jesus calls us from the market stalls to fight the empire moving us out. Jesus calls us from the market stalls to bring us to a home that cannot be bought or sold. Jesus calls us from the market stalls to stay and work together in faith and to turn the tales of greed. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who forgives all sin, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your name through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and one another. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your spirit so that we may live and serve in your newness of life through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit, that Christ may live in your hearts forever. Amen. Oh 
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. O Lord Jesus, make us instruments of your peace, and where there, there is hatred, may we sow love. Where there is injury, pardon, and where there is despair, hope. Grant, O divine master, that we may seek to console, to understand, and to love in your name. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first reading is from the book of Genesis, chapter 45. Joseph said to his brothers, I am Joseph. Is my father still alive? But his brothers could not answer him. So dismayed were they at his presence. Then Joseph said to his brothers, Come closer to me. And they came closer. He said, I am your brother Joseph, whom you sold into Egypt. And now do not be distressed or angry with yourselves because you sold me here. For God sent me before you to preserve life. For the famine has been in the land these two years, and there are five more years in which there will be neither plowing nor harvest. God sent me before you to preserve for you a remnant on earth and to keep alive for you many survivors. So it, is not, it was not you who sent me here, but God. He has made me a father to Pharaoh and lord of all his house and ruler over all the land of Egypt. Hurry and go up to my father and say to him, Thus says your son Joseph, God has made me lord of all Egypt. Come down to me, do not delay. You shall settle in the land of Goshen, and you shall be near me you and your children and your children's children, as well as your flocks, your herds, and all that you have. I will provide you there, since there are five more years of famine to come, so that you and your household and all that you have will not come to, to poverty and be kissed all his brothers and wept upon them, and after that his brothers talked with him. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Psalm 37. Do not be provoked by evildoers. Do not be jealous of those who do wrong. For they shall soon wither like the grass, and like the green grass fade away. Put your trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and find safe pasture. Take delight in the Lord, who shall give you your, your heart's desire. Commit your way to the Lord, put your trust in the Lord, and see that what God will do. The Lord will make your vindication as clear as the light and the just of, justice of your case like the noonday sun. Be still before the Lord and wait patiently. Do not be provoked by the one who prospers, the one who succeeds in evil schemes. Refrain from anger, leave rage alone. Do not be provoked, it leads only to evil. For evildoers shall be cut off, but those who hope in the Lord shall possess the land. In a little while the wicked shall be no more. Even if you search out their place, they will not be there. But the lowly shall possess the land, they will delight in abundance of peace. But the deliverance of the righteous comes from you, O Lord. You are their stronghold in time of trouble. You, O Lord, will help them and rescue them. You will rescue them from the wicked and deliver them, because in you they seek refuge. The second reading is from the book from 1 Corinthians chapter 15. But someone will ask, How are the dead raised? With that what kind of body do they come? Fool, what you sow does not come to life unless it dies. And as for what you sow, you do not sow the body that is to be, but a bare seed, 
perhaps of wheat or of some other grain. But God, God gives it a body as he has chosen, and to each kind of seed its own body. So it is with the resurrection of the dead. What is sown is perishable. What is raised is imperishable. It is sown in dishonor. It is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness. It is raised in power. It is sown a physical body. It is raised a spiritual body. If there is a physical body, there is also a life-giving spirit. But it is not the spirit, spiritual that is first, but the physical, and then the spiritual. The first man was from the earth, a man of dust. The second man is from heaven. As was the man of dust, so are those who are of the dust, and is the man of heaven, so are those who are of heaven. Just as we have born the image of the man of dust, we will also bear the image of the man of heaven. What I am saying, brothers and sisters, is this. Flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does the perishable inherit the imperishable. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Our gospel this morning comes from Luke 6, 27 to 38. Jesus said, But I say to you that listen, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, pray for those who abuse you. If anyone strikes you on the cheek, offer the other also. And from anyone who takes away your coat, do not withhold even your shirt. Give to everyone who begs from you. And if anyone takes away your goods, do not ask for them again. Do to others as you would have them do to you. If you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners love those who love them. If you do good to those who do good to you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners do the same. If you lend to those from whom you hope to receive, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners to receive as much again. But love your enemies. Do good and lend. Expect nothing in return. Your reward will be great, and you will be children of the Most High, for he is kind to the ungrateful and the wicked. Be merciful, just as your Father is merciful. Do not judge, and you will not be judged. Do not condemn, and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Give, and it will be given to you. A good measure pressed down, shaken together, running over, will be put into your lap. For the measure you give will be the measure you get back. Our Gospel for today. The Gospel this morning is a direct continuation of the Sermon on the Plain. Jesus continues his teaching by illustrating what we are called to do. In this passage we hear arguably one of the most popular and known teachings of Jesus. Do to others as you would have them do to you. This teaching is also found through almost all re religions and connects humanity together. The 11 verses of the gospel this morning are full of rich and meaningful directions. Many of those directions leave us saying, being a Christian can be difficult. And if the gospel was summarized this morning, it might read, Love people unconditionally. Well, whoa, what does that mean? Here is what it does not mean, and I make this clear. From a post I saw on Facebook, unconditional love is not unconditional tolerance. The call to love our enemies is not 
a call to allow ourselves to be abused. To turn the other cheek is not a call to stay in relationships that harm and abuse physically or mentally. Loving people unconditionally sometimes means walking away, holding people accountable, not contacting people, setting boundaries, standing for justice. With that said, I would like to share two stories with you this morning from my life. One, where I found the teachings of Jesus, that Jesus is calling us to this morning, really difficult, where I had to make the choice to walk the walk and not just talk the talk. And one, where my family was being judged and was afraid of being judged. Recently, my family has been supporting family members through a complicated and delicate time of life where there is no clear direction forward. I was telling a friend about this and they replied, Oh, I thought your family was perfect. I'm glad my family's not like that. You guys seem to have it all together. Like, I'm just surprised. Upon pausing, they realized their judgment and instantly apologized. It is quick and easy to judge. Jesus is calling us to listen, to seek understanding, and to show compassion, which this person did. It just took a second for them to get there. Even more, my mom is afraid people will judge us and feeling some shame has said, extended family, we're helping extended family when telling the story as if it will help lighten people's judgments. She no longer says extended family. They are our family, no matter how we are related and we are here to support them. It is quick and easy to judge. Jesus is calling us to listen, to seek understanding, and to show compassion. My second story today comes from my schooling. So during my university degree, I had the opportunity to volunteer with Circles of Support and Accountability an organization that helps transition sexual offenders into society after they finish serving their sentence. To further describe COSA according to their website, it is an evidence-based approach to reduce sexual victimization by assisting people who have committed sexual offenses to lead responsible, constructive, and accountable lives in their communities. COSA works to achieve a world where there are no more victims and no one is disposable. And it does so with an appreciation of the natural tension between these two positions. COSA operates with an awareness of socio-cultural patterns of power and privilege that enable and normalize sexual violence in our society. Circles work to interrupt those patterns by assisting core members to recognize and take responsibility for the harm they have caused. I recommend COSA's website if you would like more information. So I found myself on a team to help support and hold accountable a core member. A core member is the title used for the person who committed the offenses. One day, I was the last to arrive to a meeting. I was early but I was the last to arrive. This meant everyone was already sitting in their chairs and they were in a circle. There was one spot left. It was on a love seat right beside the core member. As I scanned the room, internally I started debating with myself. What am I gonna do? I have to sit there? Well, 
I could pull up a chair, but if I do that, everyone's going to see that I'm actively making the choice not to sit beside the core member. Now, this was a big love seat. Like, it would fit three comfortably, so I couldn't even use this excuse, well, I, we don't want to be squished. In, in that moment, I was not seeing the core member for the human being they were. I was seeing them as someone who committed a sexual offense. After those thoughts ran through my head and I internally debated to myself, I continued to say, how can I not see the humanity in the core member? How can I not see the face of Jesus in the core member? Don't I tell people to do this every day and now I'm not going to and I'm just going to simply get up a chair, pull up a chair, and, and not sit beside them? Remember, this core member was actively acknowledging the hurt and pain they caused. They were following the rules laid out for them and trying to figure out what moving forward looked like after they caused pain, served their time in prison, and was now out. I was in no potential harm. This was not about me being scared of my well-being. This was me judging and condemning the core member. In that moment, after all those thoughts ran through my head, I decided to walk the walk and sit beside the core member on the love seat to join the meeting with six other people and to provide support and accountability. Love your enemies. Do not judge, do not condemn, forgive. For me, that day, it was hard. To close, may we seek to love unconditionally, even when it is hard and difficult. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Amen. Please join me in confessing the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Let us the Spirit of the Lord is poured out upon us in abundance, so we may pray boldly for the church, the world, and all that God has made. You teach us to love our neighbors and enemies alike. Encourage your church to follow the leading of your love, especially when it is risky or difficult. Help us to show mercy just as we have first received mercy. God of grace. Hear our prayer. Nurture fields that lie dormant, resting until it is time to bloom again. Bless farmers and all who cultivate fields and urban gardens. Give favorable weather for planting. Bring forth from buried seed an abundant harvest and guard against famine and disease. God of grace, hear our prayer. Look upon our world with mercy, that we may delight in abundance of peace. Protect all whose lives are marred by war and civil unrest. Amplify the voices that challenge us to seek forgiveness and pursue nonviolence. God of grace, hear our prayer. Your people cry out for mercy. Console hearts that long for forgiveness. Mend broken relationships. 
Heal bodies that suffer chronic pain and illness. Strengthen and deliver all whose spirits are troubled. God of grace, hear our prayer. You bind us together into one family. Teach us to forgive one another and to resolve conflicts with humility and patience. Bless families of all shapes and sizes and show love to those who are lonely or grieving. God of grace, hear our prayer. Since we have such great hope in your promises, O God, we lift these and all our prayers to you in confidence and faith. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. I invite you to take a moment, if you were worshiping with people this morning, and share the peace with those you were with, or sometime throughout the day or now, send a text message, a phone call. You can even write out an email or a letter to go through the mail to share the peace with a neighbor, a loved one, a family member, a friend, someone you come on across on the street. The peace of Christ be with you always. Let us pray. Holy and life-giving God, we give you thanks for your word, which comes among us in many different shapes and forms. We give you thanks for written word, for sign language, for proclamations, actions, for creation, the way in which the ocean moves, the birds sing, the bugs cleanse, for vibrations and the many different languages throughout the universe. Your word changes us, transforms us, and speaks to us for the many different avenues in which you correspond to us and with us, we give you thanks. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.
in peace. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Thanks be to God.